Uh, brothers and sisters, I would like now to introduce Oke okay, Eloeke, the accepted pastor and reverend of our class of 72 Government College of Mwaiya, to come and give us words of exhortation this evening. And this afternoon, for those of you in America, thank you. Pastor Kerle Weke, please. Thank you very much, Reverend Anukwe. So this evening, let me start, let us start with, if, if you could bow your heads in prayer with me, and we're going to pray before we get into it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for trusting me at this time to minister your comfort and word and love to the Amuche family and all these, your people, who are here in support and to celebrate the life of Azuike Wabiai Emuche. I yield myself to your Holy Spirit, who is the comforter to guide my lips, to speak your comforting words to your people at this time of need in their lives. This I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, if I can have each and every one of you <clears throat> turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, and I'm going to read from verses 1 all the way through the 17th verse. And it reads, To everything there is a, re a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to serve, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God had given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatever God doeth, it yeah. shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it and nothing can be taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be had already been, and God requireth that which is past. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time, for there is a time, there is for every purpose and for every work. Brothers and sisters, family, Kate Emuche, Chim Emuche, Mama, brothers and sisters of Emuche, friends, family, and everyone. We have heard some sharing 
that everyone is given so far in the scriptures. In times like this, of course, everyone, every family, every individual who's known somebody, we rightfully so ask the question, why? Of course, there's a lot of question now. Why Azuike Emuche? Why now? And we've heard some, yes, of course, you know, um, he should be the one doing this for somebody else in the family. But I want to share with each and every one of us, brothers and sisters, we all have a date. The date that we leave this earth. Of course, we know when a woman is pregnant, it takes nine months for a child to be birthed. And we have that expectation. We know that. But when it comes to the departure from this earth, we don't always know that. And that is because everyone has a date, but God is the one who sets the date. Now, most importantly, I want us to understand and also share, God is the one who does that. And we all know, if you know God, he does not make mistakes. Now, one thing that I would like to really make clear and at least put some light to is the fact that while it was a definite surprise to each and every one of us on the 6th of August, 2020, when some of us got the calls, when some of us saw the emails, saw the information, Azue Muche is no longer here. There was a big cloud all across the nation, all across the world, places and people who knew Azue Muche. Now it was understood. Now one thing, God was not surprised by that. Has been attested to, and more people, if we have all of the 130 people who are here present with us now or more, ask something about Emuche. I don't think there is anyone amongst us who will have something negative. Now he wasn't a perfect individual, but at least there wouldn't be any type of nature that will be a tainted picture. As you lived, God has a date for each individual. And that date doesn't come by, uh, you know, how well we're doing or how badly we're doing. But God is the one that set that, that date. Now that question, why? God has the, why? He has the answer. Yeah. But the only thing is, none of us is going to be able to get the answer to that why until eternity. Now, when that news broke, when we found out, okay, Emuche, from what we gathered, was the last one with Azuike Emuche. And on the next day, okay, Emuche happened to be the first one to see him in his new state. Now, if Azu had any inclination, because it's clear that at least from all we can gather, from all we know, Azu did not have any health issues that any one of us was aware of. Well, we could have said, well, okay, well, he tried, he fought the fight, and he finally gave up. But that wasn't the case. Because on that night with OK, his brother, he never knew what was going to happen next. OK himself never knew what was going to happen next. Otherwise, there would have been something slightly done differently by them. But God is the ultimate God, and we cannot question him. But one thing that we have to understand is Azue Muche is in the heavenlies right now. The soul, the real Azue Muche, is with the angels right now rejoicing and looking. And of course, I'm sure just the way he was ecstatic and pleased and happy that he's been honored by his classmates and friends and family. And if he will look down, he will say, family, Kate, Chim, Mama, okay? All the brothers and sisters, do not mourn for me. 
do not cry for me. I am well. I am doing okay. And I'm here holding spots for you until we get together again. Now think about Azuike Emuche. The physical contact that we used to have with him, Kate, Chim, Mama, and everybody else, and all of us, class of 72, and all, all the old boys, and all the other co colleagues, and everybody else that Emuche has knew in his life, the physical aspect will no longer be there. But the key thing that we need to understand and realize is, Azue Muche's journey in this earth will never be forgotten. Why not? Kate is here. Chim is here. And that legacy of Azue Muche lives on. So all we have to do, each and every one of us, I implore all of us, this is a crucial time. Yes, we are doing this. Yes, all of this world will go forth and they will get it and we will all get it. We will understand it. But there will be times that physical nature, the times that we picked up the phone and called, the pick, he picked up the phone and called, texted, emailed, we will expect it and we will not see it. Then we have to make sure that we hold up the family. We hold up his wife. We hold up his daughter, his mother, and everybody else in our private and individual prayers. As at the age of 61, lived an exemplary life that most do not live in a lifetime. Kate, Chim, Mama, Emuche family, and all that knew Azu, who have the same story of a man who lived for the good of others and humanity in general. Azu fulfilled his mission in the earth and has transitioned to heaven to receive his crown of glory. Kate, Chim, God will not forsake you and Azu's legacy lives on in you. As Azu is rejoicing in heaven now with the angels, being the same Wazinga we all knew here, the same husband you knew here, the same father, the same son, the same brother, the same uncle, and waiting till we all meet again. Now the real Azul, the soul is in heaven. His body that is still here with us is the house that we live in. When I look at you, when you look at me, you're not looking at me. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at the house that you live in. So we are all souls and live in a body. Our bodies are just the house we live in. Now, Azur's baby sister wrote what I call a poem. And this is the way Dr. Chichi Waje described her loving brother. She said, Azur was one who lived life blessing, given and loving others. He lived a very organized and orderly life with an amazing grace. She indicated that Azu was a blessing, blessed assurance that enriched the Emuche family members' lives because he always gave his best. And of course, from some of the eulogies we've just heard, and if we asked more people to speak, that would just take place in a few minutes from here. Everybody will have different stories that they will tell about Azue Muche. And that is what we have to remember. That, that is what we need to embrace. 
Yes, that physical as aspect is not there and it's not going to be there anymore, but we do not have to forget that Emuche passed this earth. It's known and it's clear. Now, I remember one of our classmates sharing with me, of course, in 76, after we all left government college, we all went different ways. Of course, I found out a few years later, uh, recently, that most of us still kept contact with each other. Most of us didn't, but now we reconnected as if we never lost touch. And this classmate shared with me the fact that Azue Muche, of course, we all understood in government college and then after we left and those who kept up and like uh, Ndu just mentioned, Azue Muche was the type of person who never allowed one to outdo him. And we know from his athletic prowess and other things that he did academically. Now, this was mentioned when they will all go out People come from out of the country or you meet him wherever you meet him and you go out to have some uh, food or drinks. Azue Muche was the one who made sure he paid. It didn't matter how many people who were present at the table. He paid the bill. He will even fight you over the bill. And this comrade mentioned to me st stating, even when they try to trick him out, Azue Muche will get up from the table and pretend he was going to the bathroom. And by the time he came back, all he did was go to pay the bill. This is a little bit of Emuche that we know. And this is the Emuche that we need to share and then reminisce over. Kate, hey, your husband, you know. Jim, your father, you know. Mama, your son, you know. Brothers and sisters, your brother, you know. Nephews, nieces, your uncle, you know. Now, he's, he's lived a life. He never was sick. Now, we know, of course, sometimes we don't, people have some ailment, some sickness or something, and then after they fight the fight, and, you know, eventually something happens, and then we put it on that. But in this case, it was clear at least not to our knowledge, it was time. He did his time. And of course, that's part of that nature of God that we cannot put on God. We cannot find the way God acts. We cannot find the way God does his things. Now, did God just take him away from you, Kate? No. Did he take him away from you, Chim? No. But Azue Muche lived his life. And he did for people. Yes, he worked all his life and he retired. And I know last week somebody mentioned the fact, okay, now he retired. And after retirement, it's time to now enjoy yourself and enjoy everything that you built. But now you're no longer there. Azud did not plan that. But it's between him and his God. So let's rejoice not because it's passed on, but let's celebrate the life that Azuike Gobiai Emuche lived. The life that he touched, the people that he assisted, things that he did, raising a daughter who I was very much impressed with last week and today, composed. Where is that coming from? That is the same deposits that our father and the impression that the father is created in her. And she's going to go a long way. The times that Kate is spent with her husband, one that will be cherished and should be cherished even in his absence, but spiritually still ever present and everybody else in the family. So I encourage each and every one of us, because if we were to look or get a glimpse of Azue Mucha right now, he will again say, family, I'm doing well. Don't cry. We shall be together. 
once again. Now, I'm going to read another scripture. So if you all can turn with me and let's see what this talks about dying and death. This is coming from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm going to read from verses 13 through 18. And it says, 13 says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, do not sorrow, do not cry for me, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Because if we were to see Azu now and say, please come back. I have not been there yet, but I'm looking forward to it someday. But from the story that we know from God's delivery and God's messages, I can attest to you that Azue Muche will say, no, I'm good where I am right now. And I'll hold a spot for you until we get together again. Now verse 16 says, for the Lord himself shall, I, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangels and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Very important. Then we which are alive and remain shall be cut up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with him. And 18 says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we should comfort each other, comfort the Azue Muche family, to comfort one another. Let's not, yes, it's okay to grieve. Yes, it's okay to cry. But let's not do that as those who have no hope. We have hope. And I'm sure Azue Muche will say to everyone and anyone, if you do not know Christ and you have not confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, make sure you do that. Now, I'm not saying, you know, if you go to church or you don't go to church. You know, we all go to church. And of course, there are different places that we'll go to and that will be. But now, the scripture, the word of God tells us what's the way. And Azue Muche will say the same thing. Now I'm going to read another scripture, which will be the last scripture reading before we continue. And this is coming from Romans chapter 10. And I'm going to read from verses eight through 10. Verse eight says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, the saving grace. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So now what does that mean? I'm just going to, you know, uh, do this and we'll pray all together. So if there's anyone who has not actually confessed, I didn't say you, you didn't go to church or you don't go to church. That's not what I'm saying. But has not confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, invited him into your life to be the Lord of your life. As we just read in the scripture, that's our saving grace, 
our entrance, our um, opportunity to make Jesus Christ the head of our life, the head of our home. So if I could have everyone, if you could just, you know, so if you are in that mix, you know who you are, but we are all going to pray. We will all pray together. And I'm just going to pray. And then I ask everyone to repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart now and save me. I thank you for taking my place on the cross and saving me and bringing me right into fellowship with you. Lord Jesus, I thank you. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus to earth to live the life, to show us the way. And right, Heavenly Father, right now, I commit my life, I commit myself unto you, and I say, Father, Lord Jesus, be my Savior. And according to the Word of God, I thank you and give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you very much, everyone. And this wraps up, at this point, uh, the word of exhortation. And I believe and trust that each and every one of us, as we've heard this and as we've listened to this, that God himself will help us. And now, of course, uh, for everyone that has prayed that prayer with us, um, if for some reason you don't attend service, maybe you do. But let's make sure we get the word of God. And then, of course, by the prayer that we just offered right now, and the scripture is there, you can read it for yourself, you know, now we have become full members of the kingdom of God, making the Lord Jesus the head of our household so that when our time comes, you know, like the scripture says, we do not live a life that we consider ourselves or look as those who do not have hope. We have hope. What is that hope? That when we pass on, we have an eternal life to live living with Christ. And as the scriptures just said, for those who are still here, when that everlasting time comes, those who are already dead will rise up first. And Christ will draw us or whoever else is here, whenever that time comes, will now rise up to meet them in heaven. So we thank God for the word of God and we thank God for the qualification, and we thank God for the life that we live and his grace and mercy that keeps us. So um, the Emuche family, we pray God will continue to hold and sustain and give you peace, give you joy. He will keep Kate, he will keep Jim, he will keep Mama, he will keep the entire Emuche family and all friends family and everybody in his safekeeping until we meet again. But in the meantime, yes, it's okay to cry. Yes, it's okay to mourn, but let's do that with knowledge, knowing that Azue Muche is in a better place. Azue Muche is not having to deal with whatever is going on now in the world. But most importantly, he lived a fulfilling life. He lived a life that is fulfilled, even at the age of 61. So it's not a situation where we could say, well, we wish he had lived a little bit. We wish he had enjoyed a little bit. Yes, he retired. And the expectation is now do things that, you know, maybe you haven't done yet. But at the same time, that's human nature. That's human thought. And that's how Emuche will think. There's never a dull moment, but it was time for rest. So thank God for his word. And we thank God for the listening ears. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit of God, who is the comforter to comfort the Emuche family and comfort each and every one of us who are friends and families and colleagues. And we thank God for his word in the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right, so now um, we'll continue, of course, uh, we skipped. So we went ahead and sang, stand up, stand up for Jesus. 
So Thank now you. I'm going to call next. Um, the presenter is Ikem Nkanginame. That was a wonderful, wonderful sermon, uh, okay? We are very proud of you. And then, um, and then, of course, we have two pastors in the class, probably more than two. Um, I don't know where to start, other than to say that if Azu was here, he would want me to talk to Chim, in particular, and Kate and Mama. Some of you are not even aware. Mama is the mama of our class. It's not.